we might be at a point where upgradability meets performance. And this is why I just ordered the new framework mini PC that lands later this year. Here it is. The tiles, eh, I don't really care about that. But what's inside is what I care about. See, over the last few years, I've been testing and reviewing laptops that are powerful, but not very upgradable or not upgradable at all. And don't think I haven't seen your comments about how framework laptops are amazing because they're so upgradable. But here's the thing. Every time I looked at a framework laptops, videos, reviews, I saw people complaining that the performance wasn't there. And I had zero interest in trading performance for upgradability. But now, Framework just announced a couple of options that are meeting performance enthusiasts halfway. They're giving us some real power while keeping some level of upgradability. But not all upgradability. So here's what I really find interesting. Let's go to learn more. Actually, let's go to desktop, browse parts. And then you have the ability to purchase these motherboards directly. And this features the new AMD Ryzen A... Wait, I'm looking at the wrong one. And this features the new AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. I didn't screw that up this time because I'm reading it. You can get different configurations. 32 gigabytes, 64 gigabytes, 128 gigabytes. Now this chip right here has RAM on board which means two things. One is it's going to be really nice for performance. They're doing kind of what Apple did a few years ago. A lot of people are seeming to like what Apple did because out of that 128 gigabytes, you're going to be able to allocate 96 gigabytes to VRAM. But there's a trade-off. You cannot upgrade the RAM. Why did Framework go with non-upgradable RAM? They're known for upgradability. They're rooting everything. I have a couple of thoughts about that. Let me know what you think. Performance and efficiency is obviously the number one thing. The Ryzen 9 390 5 plus max halo strix yeah, well, I've messed it up again. <laughs> this chip integrates the LPDDR5X memory, which is faster and more power efficient and has higher bandwidth than traditional upgradable RAM. It also takes up less space so they can make a mini computer out of it instead of having a bigger computer. There's less space you have to make on the motherboard in the case and cooling. So this kind of setup directly benefits performance and thermals. Huh, soldered RAM, framework computer, who would have thought? But it does allow for a more compact and efficient layout on the motherboard, better cooling, and and fewer mechanical points of failure. What's not to like? After all, they're giving different configurations, 32, 64, 128. In a mini PC, that's a big deal. This is the one I ordered right here. It's not cheap. Two grand for just that board, the case, and the 128 gigabyte variety. One terabyte NVMe, 99 bucks. How much does Apple charge for that? <laughs> then you have the fan, the cable, and then they nickel and dime you for every little thing. I'm just kidding. It's fine. These are modules. It's part of their ecosystem. And at this point, I really didn't care what I ordered because I know later I'll have the flexibility to change things around. Something I really enjoy in a desktop, but not so much in a laptop. I don't know. That's just me. And actually, this setup makes a lot of sense for iGPU performance. I saw this tweet from Andy. AMD understands that unified RAM allows an iGPU to share all the RAM and not be restricted. Or 96 gigabytes out of the 128. Then it has to be on chip. It's more expensive, but pays dividends if you need loads of RAM for your GPU. Intel tried this, but they actually reverted to uh, regular RAM due to the expenses. I think that's what you mean, Andy. I see you commenting all the time. And to be fair, Andy is a big fan of using the right tool for the right job. I'm also a fan of that. I'm not prescribed to Macs or Windows or PCs. Use the right tool for the right job. So a couple of reasons why I ordered this. One is y'all been nagging me in the comments to get a framework. I didn't want to get a laptop. I'm still on the fence about that. But I have a theory about framework that they actually introduced this desktop with non-upgradable RAM to test you out, to test us out, to see if the market will take this. And if we buy it, then we're okay with non-upgradable RAM. And if we see the benefits of that, fine. What are some of the benefits? Uh, you may ask. Well, if you've been watching my channel for the last year or so, you might have noticed that we've been doing some AI and LLM workflows and hardware reviews about how to run LLMs locally. It's a big topic with lots of different options. So far, we've seen that PCs with NVIDIA chips are the fastest at this, but Apple Silicon is more efficient and allows you to run larger models. I'll actually include some videos down below. You can check it out. So this desktop is exactly that. Sure, you can game on it. There's probably going to be a ton of reviews about gaming on this thing. But here on this channel, I want to test out its capabilities for LLMs. Now, there's one thing that they showed that really piqued my interest. This rack right here is just a bunch of naked motherboards. <laughs> 
that feels dirty to say. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. But it's without the cases, and they're all stacked up high, four of them, running DeepSeek or whatever AI model they're running. So this is going to be particularly interesting for those of us looking to build an AI cluster, an LLM cluster, kind of like I did with the Mac Mini cluster a few months ago, and Chuck, Network Chuck, did with uh, Mac Studios. You should check out those videos, by the way. Here, unified memory could be a major advantage to workloads that need a large memory bandwidth for inference tasks. I wouldn't, still wouldn't do training necessarily on this, but inference for sure. Oh, uh, training is when you train the models. That takes a lot more resources. Inference is when you're using a readily trained model and you're just generating stuff in case you're new to this. However, the real question is whether it's going to be worth it. Not everyone is convinced about that. Like this user right here on X, $8,000 referring to the rack of four motherboards for 256 gigabyte per second bandwidth. When you can build a faster Epic system for cheaper, I don't know what kind of components he's talking about here because for that amount of VRAM, 128 times four, 512 gigabytes of VRAM. I don't know what kind of components you're gonna need to have that much VRAM available. Now he's saying 256 gigabytes per second. On their website, they do say it's LPDDR 5X 8000 memory, which according to my calculation, is about 512 gigabytes per second. However, down in the description on their own website, they say 256 gigabytes per second. I'm not sure why the discrepancy, but for reference, the M4 Max MacBook Pros, which is what I'm on right now, they can do about 500 gigabytes per second. And memory bandwidth matters a lot when it comes to LLMs. So this person makes a good point because while the specs look good on paper, even though they don't really match up, we won't know how well it actually performs on until it's in our hands. That's why you should subscribe and stay tuned for that. I'll be reviewing that for sure. Now, why did I get a desktop instead of a framework laptop? Well, there's been many times when I walk up to one of my mini PCs, and even though nowadays they offer a ton of flexibility and connection options and ports, there's always some combination that I want that isn't readily available. It doesn't mean that when I have the framework desktop, I'll have the chip or the module available that I want at that time, but I think that a desktop is a better form factor to have upgradable and modular than a laptop. So the new framework mini PC might just be that first step in them testing out high performance configurations before they start bringing them to their laptops. If this thing delivers on its performance promises, this might be the first framework product I actually recommend on the channel, but we're yet to see. I don't know. I'm still remaining skeptical about it. This is the Ugreen Uno wireless power bank, and it's part of the Ugreen Uno series of fast and fun charging accessories for your iPhone. With a unique robot design and an intelligent TFT display, it brings fun to charge with playful status emojis that change during use. This power bank is Qi2 certified, delivering 15 watts super magnetic charging with a 10,000 milliamp hour capacity, enough to fully charge an iPhone 16 Pro up to 1.6 times. Plus, its foldable design doubles as a wireless charging stand, perfect for desk setups or on-the-go use. Now meet the Ugreen Uno charger that delivers up to 100 watts of power. It charges a 16-inch MacBook Pro from 0 to 47% in just 30 minutes and an iPhone 16 from 0 to 57% in just 30 minutes. And with three USB-C ports and one USB-A port, you can power up four devices simultaneously, covering all your Apple needs. The Ugreen Uno series isn't just about chargers. It's a full lineup of fun and fast charging solutions, including power banks, hubs, and even cables. So check out the Ugreen Uno series. It's your go-to accessories for the ultimate iPhone experience. Links are in the description. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm curious to find out. Thank you for watching. And if you want to check out an AI machine that I recently built, yeah, it's a desktop, but it's it's quite a bit bigger than a mini PC. Watch that video right over here. I'll see you next time. Bye, folks.